coming to paperback and e-readers, Isis Stark Incubus. The goddess next door gets enthralled in a romantic entanglement with an evil incubus in this all-new Isis series adventure. Pre-order your copy of Isis Stark Incubus at Amazon.com and other online booksellers everywhere. I got some comments on my rugged individualism video that had me just shaking my head because it seems like some of the viewers of that video don't understand the impact of individualism on the black community and they don't really understand what the final fate is for black folks who call themselves individuals. Now, one commenter said that individualism was needed in the black community because if we didn't have individualism, the black community would be a monolith. Well, to that individual, I have to say, is the white community a monolith? Because they've got lots of individuals, but they sure do come together, regardless of their political or religious affiliations or economic situation, to come together to oppress black people. When it comes to many of the whites and non-blacks, Yes, they will call themselves individuals, but they can put aside their differences when it comes down to keeping black people at the bottom of the world. And keeping us at the bottom of the world is something they can do as a group. Unfortunately, because a lot of black people want to get the favor of these whites and non-blacks, what they do is separate from the group of black people as a collective, and as they separate from black people, they believe that they can gain favor with those whites and non-blacks as they go out here on their own. And as they go out here on their own, they believe that they can get alliances with these whites and non-blacks as they look to gain social currency that will allow them to have a position in the system of white supremacy as individuals, believing that they will be stronger Unfortunately, what happens is these individuals wind up all alone, and as they wind up all alone, they have no support system, and that's the way white supremacy actually wants it. They want you to believe that if you're out here as an individual, you are some kind of special, and as they stroke your ego and gas your head up, making you think that you're special, what they do is separate you from the collective and as they separate you from the collective what they do is make you think that you are some sort of individual but you're only there passively to represent black people and aggressively there is a campaign to get you out of that position because when it comes to white supremacy they have only one place for all black people as a collective and that is the bottom of the world. And as they're gassing you up and stroking your ego, telling you you're a great individual, what is being done behind the scenes is a series of moves designed to make it where you wind up making an ignominious fall all the way back to the bottom. And that ignominious fall is designed to send a message to all of the other black people in the collective that if you go out here on your own, what's going to happen is even if you follow all of the rules, you will have to deal with the consequence of following the unwritten social rule of white supremacy. And that is going out and believing that you can be on the same level as whites and non-blacks. And this is the thing that flies over the head of the individual black person. The individual black person will sit there and think, Oh, I am this special black person who has allegedly pulled himself up by his or her own bootstraps. And as they believe they have pulled themselves up by their own bootstraps, they believe that they have no support. But what they really do not see are all the black people who supported them over the years to get them where they are. And instead of lending a helping hand or bringing a ladder down for the other brothers and sisters, what the individual does is kick the ladder down or set, put gasoline on the ladder and set it on fire and refuse to give black folks a helping hand, believing that the white supremacists are, and the other people who support them are going to give them a hand, 
No, what they have is a size 10 boot to shove straight up there behind and kick them all the way off the platform that they struggled to get on with the support of all of those black people. Because when it comes to black people, again, we are not a monolith. Yes, we are not a monolith, but we all need to understand that if you want to accomplish something in this life, you have to work together. And this is the point that flies over the heads of most black folks. They really just don't understand that if you want to accomplish something in this life, you're going to have to go out here and work with other people. You're going to, if you want to accomplish something and achieve something in this life, you're going to have to put aside your feelings, put aside your personal differences, put aside even your own beliefs. If you want to work with someone, and you have to put aside those differences to achieve a common goal. That's what everybody else does, and they have no problem doing this, and they have no problem doing this regarding any political system, because I had another viewer in a, out and make a comment that I was all about communism. Well, it, it's very funny because Karl Marx, the original white pookie, he had no problem working with other whites in other political systems like capitalism and socialism towards oppressing black people. And many of the communists have no problem making sure that they can work together. Again, even though these people in most cases are atheists, they have no problem working with Christians, Muslims, and people of another religion in making sure that black people remain at the bottom. But most black people, they'll sit there and say, oh, we can't, we, that you're talking about working as a collective. Oh, that's communism. Well, I find it interesting that the communist has no problem shoving a foot up a black man's backside and making sure that he goes nowhere because originally the intention of communism was supposed to say everybody was the same, but they're all in an agreement of being anti-black when it comes to the capitalists, the communists, the feudalists, the socialists, they all participate in one ideology, or as I see it, one religion, and that religion is white supremacy. But you can't explain this to some of these black folks out here who just don't seem to understand how things work. No, some of them are just so dense and blockheaded. They're sitting there thinking, oh, when you say that black people need to work as a group, that that's a bad thing. And that's something that white supremacy sadly is programmed into the minds of a lot of black folks, making us believe that if we work together, we're doing something bad. No, what we're doing by working together is something that every other person and every race and nationality does. I mean, everybody in the world, they can find a way to work together but black people, sadly, because they have been imbibing white supremacy for over 500 years, many foundational black Americans don't really understand this concept of working together and the overall impact of working together on individuals who are a part of a group. Now, I myself have benefited from people working together to help me out. I remember when Obsidian did the Sean James initiative and what that did was take a guy who was struggling and didn't have a job and enabled him to expand his platform because with the help of Obsidian and all these other brothers, I was able to further expand my gro the growing platform as related to my channel and that was all due to black men working together and black men working together. This is what helped another black man be able to have the tools to be able to make videos on the regular and do live streams. Because with that help, I was able to get my internet situation together so I wouldn't have to go to the library every day and take videos from the library. And I was able to upgrade my equipment to the iPhone I'm currently using to record these videos because I used to just record most of my videos on my old 2011 MacBook Pro and I would just use the camera from that laptop to make most of my early videos 
but with brothers working together, we were able to help me out in that situation. And before that, O'Shea Duke Jackson, when he had the Negro Manosphere website, he asked me to write articles for that. And working with him, I got the money to be able to put the cover on the legendary Mad Matilda and get the art and be able to pay the artist to do that cover. That's what happens when black people work together. It can have an impact on a black person's life that can help them move forward. And there were other people like the sister who gave me the money to do the John Haynes at Death Store comic and lay the foundation for that. She helped me to do that. And another sister who helped me get the money for the Isis Samurai Goddess cover. I really appreciate all those efforts that helped me move things forward. And I also am, was open out here to pay it forward by help, trying to help out other people by going out here and going out here and supporting people like Chris from Chris and Company with him developing his radio platform and other folks that have comics out here I'm always trying to give them a review because I understand that I'm not an individual no I understand that I am part of a collective and part of a collective is working with other people even though you have disagreements with them you still try to work with them because you need to, in order to move forward, you cannot do things alone. And this is the lie that black people have been told as related to individualism. And the whole lie of individualism has really prevented the black community from progressing because a lot of people get caught up in their ego and just go on this quest for social currency. And as they go on this quest for social currency, what they do is put themselves in a codependent situation where most of those whites and non-blacks get control of them and get leverage over them and then as they get leverage over them as related to controlling the whole social situation because if they are the ones in charge and have all the power what they can do is use that power to basically flip that person over as they're standing on the other side of that board and have them send them tumbling down and crashing to the bottom in the black community because this guy basically or this female has alienated all the black people who would have supported them and alienated all of those black people who would have supported them and alienated them because he got or she got gassed up that's what happens when you're an individual individuals basically get picked off by white supremacy yes they may rise for a minute but then they take a meteoric fall and they take a meteoric fall because these people just do not understand that you are in an interdependent society that was established by God and you never did anything alone. No, you don't do anything alone in this world. And that's what the individualist in the black community doesn't understand that leads to their community, them winding up not getting support from their community because they didn't support their community. And that's what leads to them winding up alone and humiliated at the end of their quest for success and leads to them winding up becoming an epic failure because they go out here thinking they're an individual when you never were an individual. And in order for you to do anything, you need the support of the Most High God and Jesus. And you also need the support of your fellow brothers and sisters because you are not an individual. You are part of a group and your actions affect the collective. So you need to understand that if you go out here and you go out here and alienate people, it's going to affect the collective because you don't have no allies. You're on your own. And if you don't help out other people, you're going to wind up alone and in the tender mercies of white supremacy. And that's what really sadly happens to many of these individualized black folks. And we, we see that all the time with all of these individualized blacks out here, they think that they are big wheels until they get their N-word moment where white supremacy basically yanks the rug out from under them because they've got the leverage and use that leverage to send that black person tumbling down to a great fall. And as other black people look at that individual, they shake their head because this guy or this woman could have been protected had they worked with black people 
That's what black people don't understand. They sit there thinking that they're individuals, not understanding that the only way you can maintain your power base is with a collective effort. And only with a collective effort, you can continue to maintain your position. That's what they don't understand. And again, I have had to deal with this whole individualism argument a long time ago after I lost my job at the City College of New York. I tried to tell other black men to avoid taking that exam because the HR department, it basically just discriminates against black men. And I had a guy come in saying he was a guy who got a job as an office assistant at CUNY and had that job and was a black man. He thought, oh, he was an individual, but he didn't understand that the entire group of black men were being discriminated as related to this job by females using their own group preference and they were looking to deny black men access to this job. This is what was happening, and again, because one guy thought he had his, he didn't have to look out for other brothers, and I wanted to look out for those brothers so that they wouldn't waste the intangible of their time, because I understood that a brother's time is precious, and he doesn't want to waste it dealing with hiring pools where the females were basically just openly discriminating against men and getting away with it because they could meet other diversity quotas by hiring other minorities. But when you went to that whole hiring pool, it was the heterosexual black men who had to keep wait going to these pools to wait to be on the list. And that was because you had males who just didn't understand that if you came together as a collective and called this out, then you would possibly see more men being able to get these jobs because this, is, this was, again, what happens when you're an individual. When you're an individual, you can't get support. And when you're an individual in a position in, in any place, you're basically vulnerable and at the tender mercies of those people in charge. And they can pick you off at any time. They can pick you off at any time and eliminate you easily because if you don't have anybody there as a group to stand with you, you're basically standing alone, and anyone who stands alone as an individual, especially a black person in white supremacist America, what and white and the white supremacist global system, basically that person isn't going to be standing alone because they're going to make sure that you fall, and when you fall, you will never be able to rise up again. Now, I'm hoping that this really gets folks to understand why you can't be about this whole individualism thing in the black community. Because a lot of black folks, they just sit there and think, oh, I can play this individualism game. But from every point I've seen with this individualism game and the pull yourself up by your bootstraps narrative, every one of those black people fall. So I'm, I'm trying to get people to understand that you got to work together because I wouldn't be here without the grace of God and black folks working towards helping me and working with me. I mean, if it wasn't for a lot of the people I've worked with and done collabs online with, I wouldn't be in this position to have 17,000 subs and this channel wouldn't be have grown as far as it did. I mean, if it wasn't for people coming together to watch my content, I wouldn't be here right now to be making this video right now. And if you want to continue supporting this, this channel, you can send a donation to the PayPal, the Patreon, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to help out the channel, you can also pick up some of my positive black fiction on the SJS Direct imprint, like the Isis series, the Steam series, the John Haynes series, the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, my black sorority novel, The Thetas, my black vampire novel, Eternal Night, and many of my men's issues books that transform lives. You can find all of those books in paperback and Kindle format on Amazon.com, and you can find them at other online booksellers like Smashwords, draft to digital Google Play, Barnes & Noble, and you can also find many SJS Direct books online at big box retailers like Walmart and Target. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Coming to paperback and e-readers, a steam horror in the Hamptons. The aspiring angel tries to escape a house of horrors in this all-new Esteem series adventure. Pre-order your copy of Esteem Horror in the Hamptons in digital format at Amazon.com, Google Play, draft digital and other digital booksellers, or pick up your paperback copy on May 24th. 
Coming to paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Illuminati, the man who rules the world, takes on the head of the global elite in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Pre-order your copy of John Haynes, Illuminati on Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.